All right, a uh, quick video to talk about a few things I've been seeing. Uh, I've been talking about this in groups on social media, and I see it being posted on YouTube now about other forced reset triggers or super safeties or other things like that. Uh, while logic would dictate that FRT is winning and these things all essentially doing the same thing in different ways, would indicate to the federal government that all these things are legal, right? That that would make sense. But understanding that the government isn't in the business of protecting rights, they're in the business of violating rights. I mean, let's just take it for what it is. That super safeties, possibly Alamo 15s, uh, the Tommy uh, forced reset trigger, that other triggers are not going to be covered, at least... Not in the immediate sense, get out of that light, by the ATF. They're not going to be. There's no way they're going to be. It, it, it's going to take a court order to get them to understand that those things are the same way. Now, how that battle comes about, whether it's somebody ends up getting nabbed for, like, let's say, a super safety and it goes to court, and then whether gun rights organizations latch on to that or not, or if gun rights organizations just decide to jump on that from the beginning and say, hey, you know, logic dictates and go through the process those things are going to have to happen uh, most likely now the other thing is as i see everybody talking about this case in kansas uh it with this whole thing with clock switches not historically being banned which great you know obviously like i think it was funny during the supreme court shit when you had some of the liberals on the supreme court saying the spirit of of uh the nfa would have banned these kind of things right well I, I think that's funny because what does the spirit of the Second Amendment say? And I hate getting caught up in these things too much because there's a lot of particulars that people leave out. But the reality is if we're talking about the spirit of something rather than the letter of the law, well, then in the spirit of the Second Amendment and in the letter of the Second Amendment, fuck the NFA. The NFA is a violation on every level. Like, And yes, I have no doubt that when the idiots that created the NFA, they're small-minded inability to understand the complexities of anything uh, wanted to ban handguns and anything that functioned in any kind of way so yeah I have no doubt those mental midgets intended to ban everything but in their little small brain incapable of dealing with the multitude of things and the multitude of abstract thought human beings are capable of that they lacked that they didn't cover their ass because you know why do they need to? The whole point of government is violence, and that violence will find its way to the people whether they like it or not. So, to my point, as far as machine guns go, uh, while it sounds great on the surface, and I am excited about if it moves its way up to the Supreme Court and they happen to, you know, let logic run its course completely, that it would work in our favor, like that would be beautiful. But here's here's my concern with it. What this does is, is it places that out there right now. Okay, we're going to talk about machine guns now. Well, while we're talking about machine guns, what things do we that does the NFA not encompass currently that should be considered machine guns? Do you see where I'm going with this? Never underestimate the enemy's ability to grab hold of these things. Irrationality is rampant in our culture uh, on all sides, contrary to what people want to believe. There is a very strong herd mentality amongst all sides, and you will miss these things if you do not pay attention. So be very cautious with this whole, we're going to end up having machine guns because of this shit in Kansas City, because it will be very easy for them to turn around and hurt you. And one last thing before I get done here. Thomas Graves, I left this alone. You keep commenting, and I've told you before, if, do not spam my comments with your shit, okay? If you want to make us say something, that's fine. But that's gone now, too, because you decided to attack me back at a time that was really important for me, and I didn't attack you when I should have, okay? I didn't point out how stupid you are when I should have, okay? So I'm going to explain something to you. And this is going to make this video go a lot longer, and I better sit down for this.
Thomas Allen Graves, the differences between the FlexFire patent, the 223 patent, and I think the Stakes patent in regard to the TACCON 3MR are fundamentally different on every level. The TACCON 3MR forces a positive reset via the assist lever attached to the trigger. A 223 patent resets the trigger by the geometry of the trigger and the hammer and has a locking bar. This is these differences. FlexFire does this by a non-hammer fired, striker fired, and every flex fire I read, it's it's striker fired and it, the reset is forced onto the trigger, okay, in these striker fire uh, patents that you have. So the differences are obvious. That's why there's individual patents for these different things because the differences are enough and I don't have to be a patent attorney or any of these things to comprehend these basic differences, okay? So there's right off top, okay, Thomas? Uh, and I'm going to get to like what you should be focusing on at the end if you want to be productive. Now, what happened with you and Wolf Tactical or whatever, I don't know. Maybe you screwed them, they screwed you. Like anybody can assume a whole lot of things that weren't directly involved. But the thing is, Rare Breed Triggers wasn't ever directly involved with you from best I can tell. From your own admission between messages we've had with each other. So you can be mad at them. You, your, your anger's misplaced by being angry with them is, is the first point to make, okay? And, and I'm going to get to two things. One, what you should be doing uh, to be productive. And two, why even if you were right, even if you were right, you pissed away your chance, okay? I'm going to explain this in something I do understand. In real estate, you know, you have transfer upon deaths and you have... Uh, you have quick claim deeds and things like that to transfer property to people immediately. And I had a family member here a handful of years ago that had all kinds of transfer upon death deeds for all kinds of different people because he was weird like that, right? Now, the week he died, he did a quick claim deed to particular family members. They didn't get recorded fast enough, and somebody else had some transfer upon death deeds the week that he died. Well, they took those transfer upon death deeds and acted on them very quickly and went and sold stuff very quickly. Now, by the time they got this into court, because this was around COVID time, by the time they got this into court, the realization came that, well, because that the transfer upon death deed holders were not aware that these quick claim deeds existed in the week that that person died, that the buildings that they sold during that time were sold in good faith and that those monies and properties would not come back to the people that they should have because they didn't record in time and didn't act quick enough. At least that's the the idea here, right? So while they got what was left of property and, and monies that existed after it went to court, they did not get the previous stuff, okay? So you didn't act on any of these other patents against them. You didn't send out cease and assist back then. In fact, you went as far as to team up with Big Daddy Unlimited, who created the woke before you got with them, and were selling FRT-15s before you got with them. And then you proceeded to work with them and make the Alamo 15. Okay, I, none of these cease and desist were coming from you. You weren't fighting to protect your patent at that time, it, from, at least from where I was standing. Nobody, nobody saw that. It wasn't until well after you had a judgment against you and everything else that you went on the attack. Now, Rare Breed has protected their patent from day one. They realize their intellectual property has to be protected. And look, I kind of look at you and your scope of things that you're your own Tesla, so to speak. But you're not really good at understanding what uh, Edison did in understanding business, maybe. And that's not a fault against you. I would probably have a lot of those same faults myself, maybe. I don't know. Like, I, I'm not in the position that Rare Breed or you are in, okay? But I see that you have these patents that are meaningful and that you could do things with. Now, I don't know where the limitations sit, but I mean, it's striker fire. Why aren't you trying to, and I might be misspeaking here, but why aren't you trying to make an FRT for striker fire guns? If your patent covers you and you're protected to do that, why are you focusing on this and fighting with these guys? And, and instead, why aren't you getting with people to have those things produced? If you can't produce it all yourself, like that's understandable, but like you could be getting with people or maybe you could be getting with the people that have judgments to get you and maybe work something out. I mean, I'm assuming a lot on my part, but dude, don't come in my comments attacking these folks anymore. I'm not gonna allow your comments and I'm not big on deleting stuff, but don't come in here talking this shit, there's too much that's went on. And I have said, and this is the general message, a lot of people are coming to Rare Breed side right now and I'm happy to see it and I, sh and I should probably keep my mouth shut. But I remember all those that were against Rare Breed all that time, that didn't have their back, that didn't understand the necessity 
of, of patents and intellectual property rights, and they thought everybody should just get along and do whatever. Well, like if everybody had just gotten along and done whatever, there wouldn't be legal FRT-15s right now. There wouldn't be legal FRTs, period. There might be super safeties. People are trying to, are writing a, a very dangerous line on where there's no one that's gonna have any uh, financial interest in trying to protect that right. And it's, it sucks that we have to live under that situation, but that's the situation we live under. And unless there's a financial reason, or if there, most cases people are not gonna risk everything and destroy their lives for no fucking reason, especially when you got everybody out there, by and large, not everybody, but a very large amount of people trying to tell those people that they should just surrender. Surrender the people stealing from you, but don't surrender to the government. Don't surrender to that thief, but surrender to the other thieves for the sake of what? The whim of the moment, and that's what it always is. So, Graves, I'm sorry that things didn't work out for you, but coming in, and you attacked me. You attacked me when I lost somebody that was really important to me, dude, and I could have went off the deep end at that point and just tore into you, and I didn't. And this is not tearing into you. This is just stating fundamental facts that are available to anybody on the outside. I don't know anything more than anybody else does. I've had very short conversations with Mr. Graves. He's a nice guy, but he's, uh, I think, unfortunately very wrong. And to the point now, I, he's gone after all kinds of people. Like, he's went after Hoffman. Like, if, if they've breathed the wrong way, he's went after them at some point. And like, dude, that's not helping you. Okay, like it's fine if like you don't care what other people think, but I don't think you're in a position uh, to take this approach that you've taken. Um, and I think that you would be better served by focusing on the intellectual property that you have and developing that. And I know what things are coming out, going to come out of your mouth. I can imagine that, like, like, this is the point, the blah, blah. No, it's not. It's over with. You're fighting yourself at this point, and you're hurting yourself. From where I'm standing, that's what it seems. So the best thing you can do is focus on the FlexFire patent. And for everybody else, don't be uh, caught off guard or, or don't get too excited about this Kansas City machine gun stuff because I, I'm not sure that it's going to even play out the way that we want it to. Okay, that might be one of those things they use to tear down uh, the successes as of recent, right? Think about it. Everybody have a great one. Sorry for the long, way longer than I intended it to be, but I think that I was able to touch on a few things that uh, kind of slipped. I'm happy. No one is happier that, uh, <laughs> that everybody's finally realized that like rare breed was the right side to be on from the beginning. But I can't help as the kind of person that I am. Like so many people, there was very few people that were consistently all the way around on rare breed side it, for a very, very long time. Many, many people were telling them to surrender. To surrender to the thieves. And I can't, I can't not point that out and this is i'm going to try to keep it to just this video ever pointing that out because it's better that everybody's on the same page now but like there's this complete amnesia as to like people's character changes and it's just like well how, how did that happen like where did we like are we going to explain like where you were for all that time that you got to hear now and i won't name any names like it's obvious anybody that's paid attention like these people just blank out how did we get here they don't they don't know. And it's an issue of principles and integrity and a whole lot of other things that uh, I think just get glossed over more often than, way more often than they should. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. And, and it, it's why, wait, 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 before I say, and it's why the integrity uh, of rare breed triggers, it, it, you, I don't know, the, like I always make a point, I don't know these people. We could disagree on a whole lot of things, but... The heroism involved, the integrity involved in Lawrence DeMonaco and everybody that is involved at that company and fighting this uh, stands out it is a very special thing in, in human life, in, in, in our culture. It's, and it's a very large thing missing from our culture at large anymore, given population density, right? Anyway, everybody have a great one and uh, enjoy your weekend. Laters.